So I took an iPhone video and a cheap $15 green screen and watch what happens next. All right, so first things first, I took this video just on my deck with a cheap green screen that I got off Amazon. I could drop that link below for you. Why did I shoot this video vertical? Well, believe it or not, it actually gives me more resolution when I bring it into post, even though the end result is gonna be 16 by nine. Once I have the shot, I'll bring it into After Effects and I'll bring that into a 16 by nine composition. And using the key light effect, I'll key out my background. You can see right away, it does a pretty good job. So under View, I'm gonna to go to Screen Matte. This is just showing me a black and white version of what is keyed and what's not. So you can see there's still a little bit of remnants here. And I'm just gonna bring the clip black up like that. I'm gonna ignore the outside because I'm just gonna mask that. And I'll mask out parts of my scene that aren't green. And I'm just leaving the ground here because I'm actually not gonna use my feet in the scene. I'm just gonna cover it up so we won't see them. So from here, I'll export my frame and I'm gonna to go to Composition, Save Frame As, Photoshop Layers. Now I'm actually gonna use Photoshop Beta for this because it actually has some more of the updated features like reference image, enhancing detail, and stuff like that. So if you need to download Photoshop Beta, you could do so through your Creative Cloud app. So I'm gonna bring that PSD into Photoshop Beta. And you can see it has the alpha channel here, so that's great. So I'll grab my magic wand tool and I'll select my alpha channel. And I'll expand my selection by a pixel or so, just to add some padding. And I'll add my prompt. And a new feature here, if you haven't noticed, is the reference image feature. So if I click on this icon, I can upload my reference image, which I have here. I have this nice apocalyptic image that I'm gonna use. And I just hit generate. Okay, so it gets pretty close to what I'm looking for because of the reference image. Another new feature here in my Generative AI Properties panel, I can click on this Enhance button to enhance the detail of my scene. I'll hit Generate once more, just to get a few more options. I'll go with this one. Now I only kept myself in the scene as a reference, so the Generative AI software will take the lighting from my clip and it will generate the background based on that lighting, just to make a better composite overall. So I'll remove myself, and then I'll select a nice portion here and I'll just hit delete. And I'll fill in the blank here. Just hit generate. Another thing I wanna do is generate a couple foreground elements I could use later on for depth. So I just generated a car here and some junk over here. Now, instead of just bringing this right back into After Effects, I'm gonna hide my foreground for now. You'll see why later. And I'm gonna export a still frame of this as a JPEG. So once I have my JPEG of this still frame, I'm gonna bring it into Zoe Depth. I'll drop that link below as well. Going to Zoe Depth, I'm gonna to go to the Image to 3D tab, and I'll drag my generative image here to upload it. I'll select Keep Occlusion Edges, so it's all one piece, there's no breaks in it. And Submit. And you can see it creates an amazing 3D mesh of my scene. You can see when I move around a little bit, so I'll download this as a GLB file. I'll bring that back into After Effects with my PSD layer that I created before, and I'll start creating my scene. So importing my GLB file into my background and model settings box will pop up and I'll adjust the size and I'll make sure that I select flip Z axis. You can see the image is visible, but it's kind of reversed. So I have to flip horizontal and as I move this around, you could see the incredible parallax here that will make this scene even more realistic. So there are a couple alpha edges in the corner here, which is why I generated those foreground elements. So I'll drop those into my scene and I'll make those 3D layers. And using the camera custom view over here, I can position these foreground elements actually in the foreground so you actually get that perfect parallax when you move the camera around. So now adding some video elements to add some more motion, I'm gonna add some alpha clips of zombies in the distance. And this is a great clip here of a zombie duck. Just making sure that they're all 3D layers, I can adjust where they end up in 3D space relative to where they are in the scene. Okay. 
Once I have those set, I'll add one more clip here of an apocalyptic sky. And I'll do the same thing. I'll make it a 3D layer and I'll bring it all the way back into the back of my scene against my sky. And I'll create a mask and I'll feather it quite a bit. So now we just have to move on to lighting. I'll add a parallel light, which will light up my sky. So I'll have that boosted to like 170%. Then I'll add an environment light, which will fill in the rest of my scene. Since my video layers are only 2D layers, my light won't actually wrap around them. So I have a Boris FX plugin that I'm gonna use that's part of the Continuum package, Boris Continuum Edge Lighting. I'll drop that link below as well. This will wrap around 2D elements, making them blend seamlessly into 3D comps like this one. So I'm gonna set my light elevation and my light direction, both coming from our light source in the back and adjusting my highlight intensity Highlight color, I can make that this bright yellow orange here. And apply mode can be add. And I'll adjust the shadow intensity as well. And I'll do the same thing with slight adjustments to each of my zombie characters and it'll look something like this. So now I'm in a good place. Now I just need to color correct and add some adjustments to really sell the effects. I'll create an adjustment layer and I'll add Lumetri color to make some contrast and color adjustments. And I'll also color correct my subject, me. Another great plugin part of the Continuum package is Atmospheric Glow. I could add this to an adjustment layer and I could select one of the pre-made built-in presets. I'm gonna use Dust Up and it just gives a really dramatic ambient environment to the scene. So now finally, I could parent all of my 2D layers, my video layer, my foreground layers, the background, and my zombie characters, and I can parent those to the GLB layer, and I can keyframe some really nice slider movements using the position keyframe. And after adding some film grain and some final adjustments to my layers, here's my final result. 